Welcome back, fellow Flutter enthusiasts. Today, we embark on an exciting journey into the realm of inherited widgets, where the mundane becomes magical and the complex transforms into clarity. Let's kick things off by laying the groundwork. Imagine you're building a Flutter app, and you encounter a common dilemma. How do you efficiently pass data between different parts of your widget tree without resorting to convoluted workarounds? This is where inheritance swoops in to save the day. But before we delve into the specifics of inherited widgets, let's take a step back and revisit the fundamental concept of inheritance in programming. In the world of object-oriented programming, inheritance allows us to create new classes based on existing ones, thereby inheriting their properties and behaviors. It's like building upon the foundation laid by those who came before us. Now, let's apply this concept to the Flutter framework. Flutter, as you may know, revolves around the idea of widgets, UI elements that make up the building blocks of your app's interface. But what if you want to share data between these widgets in a clean and efficient manner? This is where inherited widgets enter the scene, serving as messengers that carry data down the widget tree to where it's needed most. Imagine a scenario where you have a widget deep within your widget tree that requires access to a piece of data stored at the root level. Traditionally, you might resort to passing this data down manually through each intermediate widget. Not only is this cumbersome, but it also violates the principles of good software design. Enter inherited widgets. With just a few lines of code, you can declare a data source at the root of your widget tree and effortlessly access it from any descendant widget. It's like having a secret passage that allows your widgets to communicate seamlessly without breaking a sweat. Now let's jump in to see some code magic. So here I've opened my project, and from here let's remove this my home page thing, and also let's remove these comments from here. And let's create a screens folder, then inside it, create my home page dot dart file. And inside it create a stateful widget, named as my home page, and then import the material library. Now come into the main dot dart file, and here let's import the my home page class and then remove the title from here. NWO come up again here, and create a new directory as inherited widget, then come into this directory and here create a new file as, color inherited widget. Now come in this file, and here create a class as color inherited widget, and this class will extend the inherited widget class. It means that it will be used for sharing data across the widget tree. Now inside this class create a color variable. Then here we need to create one more function parameter, on color change function that will be called when the color data changes. Then let's override the inherited widgets method, and then create the constructor for this class. And then add these two parameters as the required to this class. And one more thing, please make this small f to capital, because this is a class, now all the errors are resolved for this class. And here inside the constructor, add the key, and make this as constant. Now we need to create a static method of the color widget class. It takes a build context parameter and returns an instance of color widget if found in the widget tree, or null otherwise. This method is used to conveniently retrieve the nearest ancestor of color widget from a given context. Now this update should notify method, is the override method, inherited from the inherited widget class. It compares the color property of the old widget with the color property of the new widget. If they are different, it returns true, indicating that dependent widgets should be updated. Otherwise, it returns false. Now come on this my home page screen, then come up above here, and create a color variable, and assign the red color to this variable. Now create a on color change method. This method is called when the color needs to be changed. It updates the state variable color to green color using setState, which triggers a rebuild of the widget tree. 
Now come in the build method, and from here remove the container, and here make the use color widget, which we have recently created. Now our this widget needs three parameter. So color, and on color changes value is already added, then we need to add child widget. So let's create that. Do here let's add the scaffold widget, then for the body part, add the center widget, then inside it add the column widget, and here add the main axis alignment to center. Then for the children part, first add the text parameter, then inside add a title for the app. Then we need to add one more widget, which will going to change the color, so here add the color card widget, and don't worry about this widget, we will create this widget very shortly. And also we need to pass the key to this widget. Then let's create a button that, when pressed, calls the on color change method to change the color. Then let's create a stateless color card widget. Then here inside this container, first add the margin to this widget. Then add the decoration parameter. And then let's add the color to the container, and we will get the color from color widget. And also let's add the corner radius to this container. And now add the height and width for this container. Now let's run the code, and here our app is installed, now let's tap on this button, and as you can see the color of this container is changed, from red to green. So this is the magic of inherited widget. We haven't passed the any parameter from one widget to another widget, but still we are able to access the value. So yup this was it, if you have learned something new from this video, then please like share this video, and please comment down what you want to learn.